everyone, Paul here. Um, just hanging around the workshop today, um, waiting for glue to dry on my current project I'm filming. So decided to have a quick go at something else. Um, I basically had got my little offcuts from pen blanks that I'd kept and glued some together and created an oak and walnut pen. It's turned out really well, really, really pleased with it. Uh, really getting into the hang of, of, of making these pens now. Um, hopefully, I mean, I've, I've done a fair bit of talking in the video, whether I keep it in or not, or whether I speed things up. Uh, I'll have to see when I, when I edit the video, but hopefully this will help to, as possibly an instructional video for somebody who's start, starting out in pen turning. Uh, it's just my way I do it. It's not necessarily the right way um, or a way that everybody should follow. It's just basically the my way of doing it. Uh, I've seen people using uh, roughing gouges on, on the pen blanks um, and various uh, spindle gouges and uh, carbide cutters, uh, scrapers, just to shape everything. I personally prefer to use the skew for everything. Um, the skew is probably, in my eyes, the best tool you can use for doing something like a pen blank if you're comfortable in using it. Obviously, if you're not comfortable in using it, use whatever tools you prefer to use. But a sharp skew, um, really, really light cuts. I've found as well in the past that if you try and take too much out at once, especially with oak, that because the oak has got a really deep, heavy grain, that you can, if you you can get a big tear out. And the other thing as well, obviously, when this is spinning around the mandrel, if you're pushing down too fast, too hard, trying to take too much out, it can actually warp the mandrel a bit, and you can then obviously get an off off round pin. So the key, patience. Really, really light cuts. It doesn't matter what tool you use, light cuts, just to take it down slowly. Don't rush it whatsoever because, to be honest, the turning down probably takes, to be honest, less time than the finishing off. Um, by the time you've gone through all your grits on your sanding paper, and in my case, CA glue, cut back with some more sanding paper, more CA glue, and then finish off some T-cut, assemble the pen, takes a damn sight longer than turning it down with really, really taking your time. So hopefully just a quick video while I fill in. Uh, like I say, I mean, I enjoy doing that. I don't know where it's going to go yet. It will just go in, inside on, on the cabinet again where all the others go until somebody picks it up or gives it away. So um, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you on the next project video. Thanks a lot. Bye. Right, here's a fun little project while I'm waiting for my segmented project to glue together. Um, I've just basically took the offcuts of my pen blanks that I've used in the past like that, um, glued them together overnight and just chopped these back to size and drilled them. Uh, so I'm about to put, glue the pen inserts in and uh, get those on the lathe. I'm sure you've all seen this done before so I will carry on when I'm on the lathe. Okay, so I've got my blanks glued up, um, everything in place board back to the to the brass inserts um, I'm just gonna turn it down just sharpen the skew
Okay, so they're both of it round now. Uh, I'm doing very, very light cuts. What I've found is that you get a lot better cut. I mean, especially the oak. As you can see there, it's got really, really heavy, deep grain. And the trouble is it's so easy that if you try and take too much out that you'll end up just getting tear out. The other thing I also find as well is that obviously if you're pushed down too to try and take too much out, then you actually warp the spindle and therefore your, your pen doesn't stay round. thing to remember if you want this bulbous shape um, you've got to be careful not to make it too big because when you obviously put the clip on you can find that this bulb will hit the middle here and therefore it will hit the middle here and the piece at the end will be stuck up in the air sort of like that Right, I'm going to go up the grits now with the sandpaper. I'm going to start off at 150. Um, right the way up to 400, and then I've got some 600, and then I've got some 1200 wet and dry, which I'll use actually on the um, CA glue. <laughs> Gently letting that sand, you can see where you've got tool marks because you've got these little dark patches where the sand has not cut back to. Keep the paper moving and then that way you don't get any more grooves in the work and just flick out the sawdust as you do it. The, the first grit, the 150 grit, does let, let you then also reshape the pen a bit if you want to take it down a bit, like I'm going to take that curve down a little bit because it's a bit too much more than that one. So I'll just gently let the sandpaper do the work. the end of each grit just go up and down the grain like that just turn as you go just helps to remove any more scratch marks <coughs> right it's just finishing up with the 600 grit there up and down the grain. Now it's important you don't miss out a grit because if you miss out a grit basically what happens is um, each grit of sandpaper helps take out the scratches from the previous grit. So where I've gone from what is it, uh, 150 there to 240 and then to 320 if I missed out the 240 basically the 320 wouldn't take out the scratches from the 150 the 320 will only take out scratches from the 240 so important not to skimp on missing a grit and again as you can see that's 600 and i've used it now 
and that is probably absolutely useless it's as thin as anything now everything has gone um and it really goes the same for a lot of the sandpapers i mean if i was to use that 600 again now it's probably the equivalent of 800 a thousand i don't know it's it's really really worn and not going to do a lot so that is now super smooth the next thing because i'm gonna coat this with ca glue is make sure everywhere's clear right the other thing i'll also do as well i'm gonna spin the lathe up at full speed because you'll be surprised how much dust still flies off everywhere so there you go. that's just to help get, get rid of some more dust and then what i'll do as well i'll usually some people what they do they clean up the the grain on the pieces with something like denatured alcohol or as in the uk we call it methylated spirits but um i'm quite happy with it and i'll just usually again go over with the vac keep my hand off on the work so that the vac doesn't rub on here and, and mark it all just to help clear if there's any more dust on there because i'm dealing with ca glue i don't really want it all over my lathe um so what i'll do i'll usually put a board down i'll use thin ca glue um as i find it goes on a lot better i have used medium in the past as well right you don't need it but it's recommended that you buy the accelerator uh, i bought this one off ebay um probably but it certainly wasn't a fiver i'm sure of that quite cheap you can do it without it it just obviously makes work an awful lot lot quicker uh, i can put a coat on of ca quick spray go straight to the next coat if i my first pens i did when i didn't have this i would put a coat on i would then have to wait about 20 30 seconds before i can then put another coat on so obviously that takes a fair bit of time my kitchen roll i've basically folded in half and half again and then you can cut off small strips like this. I will then usually fold it in half like that, put two or three dabs of CA glue on and just run across while the lathe's spinning on the slower speed. Give it a zap of the accelerator and then you can go on with the next next piece. I also find as well is that because obviously you're putting CA glue on here, when you go down that way, for example, by the time you get to this end, you've actually fairly well run out of glue what's going on the pen. So it's always worthwhile going one way with one piece the other way with another piece and going backwards and forwards like that i will give this probably about five coats now and then i'll cut it back then with the 1200 wet and dry um, obviously everybody does things a different way uh, that's just my way that i've i've done it so far so let's get on with the glue so two or three drops on there bottom one that's now rubbish so put it on one side quick spray of this accelerator doesn't need much get your next next piece of paper towel this time go the opposite direction that's five coats and by using the accelerator each coat like I say goes bone dry instantly and I've got to say that that walnut with the oak has come up really nicely so I'm just going to put the lid on my CA glue put that to one side and I'm just going to use a bit of 1200 wet and dry doesn't have to be too wet um, and just take this down a bit again gent just gently let the paper do the work you don't need to force it be enough and with the lathe still running just another bit of kitchen towel just to dry it all off and if we 
look at that now. It's took most of the CA glue off. There's still some on there, but that is really, really smooth. And I will carry on now with another five coats of CA with the accelerator in between. <laughs> that you can just about feel the grain in there um, and what I tend to use then um, I'll finish with the glue now finish with the accelerator so I'll put those out the way what I finish off with is tea cut uh, this is something in the UK I don't know what um, whether it's available abroad I'm sure it is it may well come under a different name um, basically it's something you use, you use on your cars it's more of a cutting compound to, to cut back say remove scratches and stuff like that from paintwork and again you want very little of this I don't know if you're supposed to or not but I'll just give it a shake All I do is put a little bit like that on the kitchen roll, run the lathe slowly, just coat it to start with and then just rub it in. This will just cut back on the CA and just give it that nice smooth finish. And just turn to a clean piece of kitchen roll. Wipe it all off. Just be careful of your ferrules there because uh, they will put a lot of muck onto your kitchen roll and you don't really want to transfer that back to your pen. And there you go. That is really smooth. I can just about probably feel a little bit of texture in there but not much whatsoever. And it's nice and shiny as well. And for this next piece, uh, if you don't have a pen press, uh, what I do here is I use my chuck. I've got two small pieces of hardwood. This one fits into your tail stock. Not a tight fit, it's just loose there. It just needs to sit in there. And this one being square just get your jaws the right size it doesn't need to hold in tight or anything just loosen the jaws and it go it pops in there doesn't matter if it comes out just there as a pen press so here's all the bits of kit so the first thing of all on the base so you need to obviously lock your tail stock down line this up and just slowly don't force it too fast because sometimes these do twist a bit just go slowly in until it meets and that one's gone over first one in. For the twist mechanism they all vary. Um, I'm not going to go off and read the instructions but obviously if you don't have instructions the way you can do this 
don't go too far at once. That's the key. If you put this in place, at the moment I'm just going to go down to the brass bit. Some pen kits say going into the line. I've had others which say leave 20 or 30 millimeters out. And obviously, like I say, just don't go too much at once. Put the pen in. It's closed so we can't see it. It's open. There you go. So I reckon if I went in about another one to two millimeters, which would probably be just below that line, it will be enough. So just below the line. That's fully wound in. It's down to personal preference of having obviously how much you want stuck out. I prefer about that much. Then on this particular pen kit, your centre band goes on. Just pushes down there. And the top. This piece goes in there. That on there. Bring the tail stock up again. Now, obviously if you've got somewhere where you want this particular part to be over now is the time to make sure you line it up where you want it before you put it in fully tight usually once it's in fully tight it's harder to move around and then you've got more chance of scratching the pen again so that goes on there now if you've got something where the grain runs through you need to tight line it up obviously before you push it all in just Gently twist it around until you find the grain where you want to meet up. Uh, obviously these are all separate pen blanks. That looks fine to me. And then just push in. And that is the finished pen. Opens and closes fine. Really nice and smooth. So we've got a cheap chrome kit with oak and walnut.